Let's learn about imaging in acute pancreatitis. My name is Dr. Aishwarya. What are the causes of acute pancreatitis? First and most common is alcohol intake and gallstone disease. Uncommon causes include trauma, drugs and iatrogenic causes like post ERCP, tumors and infections like mumps. Diagnosis is made when any two of these criteria are satisfied. Symptoms of epigastric pain radiating to back, elevated amylase and lipase more than three times the normal or typical imaging features present either on ultrasound, CT or MRI imaging. Coming to phases of acute pancreatitis, it has a biphasic clinical course. First is the early phase which is in the first week of the disease. There can be systemic inflammatory response syndrome or multi-organ failure. Then there is late phase which is after the first week which can be complicated by infections or sepsis. This can be shown on imaging. Severity grading is done both on clinical and imaging findings. First is mild grade where there is no organ failure or no local or systemic complications. Next is the moderate grade of the disease where there is transient organ failure which occurs for less than 48 hours or there is local or systemic complications. Next is the severe grade of the disease where there is persistent organ failure continuing for more than 48 hours and with or without local or systemic complications. Next moving on to revised Atlanta classification which introduces new terminology for fluid collection. Acute pancreatitis divided into acute interstitial edematous pancreatitis which less than 4 weeks is called peripancreatic collection and after 4 weeks it's known as pseudocyst. The wall formation of acute peripancreatic collection leads to formation of pseudocyst. Next there is acute necrotizing pancreatitis which less than 4 weeks is called acute necrotic collection and more than 4 weeks it's called walled of necrosis. Wall formation of acute necrotic collection forms walled of necrosis. Coming to the radiographic signs, first is the colon cutoff sign in which the colon is not visualized after the splenic flexure due to spasm of descending colon. Next is the sentinel loop sign in which there is localized ileus of a small intestinal loop, commonly the jejunal loop. Other additional findings on radiograph includes air foci in upper abdomen occurring in cases of emphysematous pancreatitis which occurs due to secondary infection by anaerobic organisms. Next is the elevated hemidiaphragm, pleural effusion more commonly on left side and basal atelectasis then features of pulmonary edema can be present. Ultrasound is an important primary modality of choice. We can easily visualize gallstone which is cause of acute pancreatitis. The pancreas will be bulky, edematous and can show heterogeneously hypoechoic parenchyma. The necrotic areas can be seen as hypoechoic areas which are ill-defined. Here posterior to pancreas, we can see splenic vein and formation of portal vein, rule out thrombosis using Doppler. Then we can see peripancreatic fluid collection. Contrast enhanced CT is the most important imaging of choice, ideally to be done 72 hours after the onset of pain because necrosis is well visualized after 72 hours. The protocol includes arterial phase imaging to visualize splenic artery or gastrointestinal artery complications like pseudoneurysm formation. Next important phase is the pancreatic parenchymal phase where pancreatic parenchyma homogeneously enhances. This is 45 to 50 seconds or instead of the second phase we can do portal venous phase to visualize the portal vein thrombosis. Let's discuss normal appearance of pancreas on CECT imaging. It is positioned anterior to the portal vein. Normal size criteria where head is 23 plus or minus 3 millimeter, neck is 19 plus or minus 2.5 millimeter, body 20 plus or minus 3 millimeter and tail 15 plus or minus 2.5 millimeter. Reference is Haga imaging. Morphology includes normal lobulations are seen in the pancreas. 
which are lost in edematous pancreatitis. On MRI, the normal pancreas appears as slightly hyperintense on T1 imaging compared to liver and spleen due to the enzymes. And on T2 imaging, it appears slightly hyperechoic in comparison to muscles. Here we compare to paraspinal muscles. Let's discuss each pathology in detail. First is the acute interstitial pancreatitis which shows bulky edematous pancreas. Here is a case of acute interstitial pancreatitis where head, neck, body and tail shows increase in size. That is they are bulky. This condition is of two types. Within four weeks it's called acute peripancreatic collection. And after 4 weeks, when the wall formation occurs, it forms pseudocyst. Now, I'll show a case of acute peripancreatic collection. These are axial CECT sections going down from the thorax. We can see bilateral pleural effusion. This is the liver and this is the spleen. And then as we go down, we can see perisplenic and perigastric collection with surrounding heterogeneity and fat stranding. First, we can see the tail part and body part of the pancreas which appears bulky with associated peripancreatic collection. As we move down, we can see the neck of the pancreas and head of the pancreas which are also bulky. Another case on MRI imaging, this is a different case also showing bilateral pleural effusion. And as we move down, we can see the liver. the spleen and this is the stomach moving down we can see absence of gallbladder because it's a post-op case and there is dilatation of cystic duct and also there is dilated common bile duct which shows a small hypointense foci that is a stone it's colodocolithiasis case Let's scroll down and we can see dilated CBD. We can see another calculi within the lumen. This is the cause of acute pancreatitis. Now here we can see the pancreas which is again bulky in size and edematous in appearance. There is extensive heterogeneity and fat stranding in surrounding tissues. Let's measure the body of pancreas 3.58 exceeding the normal size. Even the other parts of pancreas were exceeding in size. Moving on to pseudocyst of pancreas, there will be thick walled homogeneously appearing fluid density cyst. Then there's acute necrotizing pancreatitis. CT done within 5 to 7 days shows necrosis very well. Within 4 weeks it's called acute necrotic collection. After 4 weeks it's called walled off necrosis. I will show a case of acute necrotic collection. Similar axial sections of CECT going down from above. We can see bilateral pleural effusion here. Next, we can see the liver, spleen and the stomach has oral contrast within. Now we can see a hypodense cystic lesion which is heterogeneous. This is the necrotic collection in the tail and the distal body part of the pancreas. As we move down, we can see the pancreatic parenchyma and this collection is well within the parenchyma and slightly exophytic. Moving on to neck of the pancreas, we can see necrotic collections in the head, neck and also in the uncinate process of the pancreas. This is another collection, necrotic collection. There was stent in the pancreatic duct. Now we can also see cholelithiasis which is the cause of pancreatitis in this case. The necrotic collection is extending down and is surrounded by jejunal loop as in this case. There is extensive heterogeneity and fat stranding in the mesentery. Also lower down in the abdomen and also right paracolic gutter shows Fast stranding.
mesenteric fat stranding can be seen even in the root of mesentery next is the wall of necrosis in which necrotic collection forms a wall this is a thick walled collection with heterogeneous contents within there are many types of severity assessment scores based on radiological imaging first is the balthazar system dividing grade a to e next is the ct severity index now we follow the modified ct severity index in detail about modified ct severity index it includes three criteria the first criteria is pancreatic inflammation no inflammation is given a score of 0 intrinsic abnormality with or without inflammatory changes in peripancreatic fat is given a score of 2 pancreatic or peripancreatic collection or peripancreatic fat stranding or necrosis is given a point of 4 next criteria is pancreatic necrosis no pancreatic necrosis is 0 less than 30% of parenchyma is 2 more than 30% parenchyma is 4 extra pancreatic complications is given a point of 2 these includes pleural effusion ascites vascular complication gastrointestinal tract involvement complications of pancreatitis includes vascular complications that is arterial pseudoaneurysm formation or rupture next is venous complication includes thrombosis or varices non vascular complications of pancreatitis includes these collections which are formed can get infected forming infected necrosis there can be bowel necrosis or perforation or there can be pancreatic ascites that is pretty much about imaging in acute pancreatitis thank you for watching if you want videos on any topics please comment below please follow share and subscribe radiology doodles